Hello, how are you? All right, now I wait for the house for and I get stuck with this money. Not be you, where the bad where the mushi or makoko. Hold up. Yeah. Ha. Okay. When I see this link, now for now wait for the house for and. Where see the doubt whether far you did Nigeria? Hello, don't think about it. This link it go carry you direct. Go the place where we say it go help you choose which investment you want to do for Nigeria. Any investment, whether na waiting, whether na bank shares, whether na agriculture, whether na real estate, whether na stock exchange, any investment we want to do. Make sure say you click on because anything free happen for that for anytime and it go better. Say if you come to Nigeria, you go get where you go relax and you get investment to fall back to. Hello, make sure say you click on more because you want to say what? Eh? Where that? Hey, okay. See, make I help you click the link. Make you click, make you click oh. waiting. When we say now, I'm be alone from my school, you go. You know, yeah, when I talk, say now nah, for people waiting for the hospital. People waiting for the hospital, what are they call? I know, go, oh, they oh, go, oh, go, oh, go, oh, go, oh, go, they are called diasporans, oh, there. Let me talk to my diasporans people. Make sure say you click this link, oh, yeah, to betterment your life. Because you both say what? The investment in your country, in Nigeria, is a forever life betterment. Thank you. <laughs> you see there, yeah. If you like say you don't get job for filling station, I'll be you see there. Go, go, not. Welcome to the 15th Nigerian Diaspora Day virtual event. We are so happy to have you. Um, my name is Dr. Shell Adigun. I am the first African to compete in both the Summer and Winter Olympic Games. So for all of my uh, diasporas, diasporans, oh yeah, I think it's called diasporans. <laughs> now joining us from Abuja, the chairman and CEO of NICOM, Nigeria Diaspora Commission, Honorable Abike Dagri Erewa. Welcome everybody to this year's Diaspora Day celebration. We're happy to celebrate the 15th Nigerian National Diaspora Day, which will be the second that NICOM, as an agency, will be celebrating. Well, Thanks to COVID-19, here we are doing the first ever um, webinar. This year's theme, Leveraging Diaspora Resources for National Development in a COVID-19 Era, is of course very appropriate. And we hope that the activities we have executed, those that are ongoing, and the ones that are yet to take off, are all definitive of this theme. Our interactions today is expected to mobilize you to key into some of the programs and chat improved or better ways on how to achieve them. We hope that at the end of the day, we would have motivated the Nigerians in the diaspora on deployment of diaspora investments and entrepreneurship to assist with the post-COVID-19 recovery process, especially as diaspora home remittances, which sustains livelihoods, are likely to be impacted negatively. We're working on what we call the Diaspora Merit Award, which will celebrate Nigerians in the diaspora. It should have held this year, but for COVID-19. But by God's, God's grace, I'm sure we'll do the first edition next year. But we're also glad that we have a lot of success stories about Nigerians in the diaspora. And that's why we have the diaspora accolades, where we celebrate every one of you for the great things you are doing all over the world. Our keynote speaker today, Masai Ujiri, is a renowned figure. He's an international, highly respected, successful professional in the field of sports, particularly basketball. Ujiri has done things to elevate the lives of a lot of Nigerian youth. So we thank you, Mr. Ujiri. And I hope that we all continue to work together to deploy our human resources, everything we, we can do to build a better place. Let's do everything to build the Nigeria of our dreams. I am delighted to address you on this commemoration of Nigeria Diaspora Day 2020 as a global event. The positive reversal of migration is how to harness the diaspora for nation building. This is in light of the fact that the diaspora can play an important role in recovery and reconstruction of Nigeria. I would like to acknowledge the support of the various diaspora groups around the world, especially, especially here in the UK, that have been very supportive of the efforts of the Nigeria High Commission in the UK not just as a constructive uh, critic, but also as development partner. You are our prized asset. 
World Day of Mention is a special thanks to the Nigerian Think Tank Group, NTTG UK, NATO, and Canoe Convention for a few. May I conclude by saying Nigeria has the biggest market in Africa, so there are lots of opportunities at home, even to develop an export market. Many thanks for your attention, and I wish you fruitful deliberation and celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ambassador. The next thing we have on the agenda is a goodwill message coming from Abuja as well. This goodwill message is coming from the Minister of State Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Zubairu Dada. It is indeed an honor and a great pleasure to be at this very first ever virtual National Diaspora Day. I am most impressed that you all took time to participate in this event, regardless of the differences in the time zone. This celebration will further enable constructive interface and dialogue between Nigerian professionals, the academia, and experts in diaspora when available opportunities and developmental initiatives, programs and projects to be executed as part of the contributions of Nigerians in diaspora towards the socio-economic, cultural, and political development of their fatherland. I therefore call on all Nigerians in diaspora to join hands with the federal government of Nigeria and the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission by contributing their resources, skills, and talents for national development. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which I represent on its part, will continue to stress the importance of engaging with the Nigerians in Diaspora at the state, national, and international levels in advocating the diaspora potential in the post-COVID-19 pand pandemic recovery efforts. We will continue to ensure that the vision, mission, and goals of NITCOM are implemented for the accelerated development of our nation. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless Nigeria. All right, so here we go. Is definitely on to the next. We have a very, very special address from the chairperson, House Committee on Diaspora Matters, Honorable Tolulokwe Akande Shadikwe. You are welcome. It is my singular honor and privilege to be on your meeting on this auspicious ceremony to herald the National Diaspora Day. We're here because we need to appreciate the role of Nigerians in diaspora. And we need to acknowledge the role of Nigerians in diaspora in mobilizing resources for national development. And on behalf of the Ninth Assembly of the National Assembly of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the House Committee on Diaspora under the leadership of Right Honorable Speaker, uh, Mr. Femi Bajabi Amila, I thank the diaspora community. I, I thank the co-organizers for this event for ensuring that in the midst of the global pandemic, this important national event can still take place. This demonstrates how highly, when you look at the number of participants that are online today, it's very, very impressive. And this demonstrates how highly we regard our fellow brothers and sisters in the diaspora. The need for this yearly event can already be overemphasized in view of the immense contribution and immense potential of the Nigerians in diaspora. I also express uh, our priority congratulations to the diaspora community and Nigerians in diaspora commission particularly for this 2020 National Diaspora Day. On our part, the committee is committed to supporting NIDCOM and its program because of our belief in your activities and the activities of, of uh, NIDCOM as an organization, which are already impacting positively on the nation in the short period of the operations of NETCOM. I wish you very fruitful and rewarded operation. We um, are very excited to now pass this message on for my excellency, our Mr. Bar President, and we will now 
prepare for these great messages that we'll be receiving now from, from Mr. President. So get prepared and um, here we go. I congratulate Nigerians in diaspora as we celebrate the National Diaspora Day 2020. As you are aware, this date, July 25th of every year, has been set aside by the federal government of Nigeria to A, celebrate Nigerians in diaspora, estimated to be over 17 million in the Americas, Europe, Asia, Oceania, and Africa. B, to facilitate networking among the diaspora with the ministries, departments, and agencies, the government, the diaspora state focal point offices, and other private and civil society organization participants in the implementation of a practical framework for the effective engagement of the diaspora for national development. This year's celebration is by a webinar for the very first time due to the effects of the ravaging coronavirus pandemic, which has created a new normal for our activities. Let me, at this juncture, commend the enormous contribution of the Nigerians in diaspora to the socio-economic development of Nigeria. Over the first three years, Nigerians in the diaspora have brought in over 25 billion United States dollars annually as home remittances to the Nigerian economy through official and non-official channels. This is about 6% of our annual GDP and upwards of 80% of our annual budget. This has impacted our livelihoods of Nigerians in terms of education, health, housing, and estate development, industry, trade and investments, agriculture, and technology skills transfer. In terms of diaspora home remittances, Nigeria is rated as the number one in sub-Saharan Africa, and this is still growing, especially with the advocacy and mobilization programs of the newly established Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. Nigerians in Diaspora are also known to be engaged in skill transfer in ICT and industry. They are also active in our universities as lecturers and in carrying out medical missions. It is therefore my sincere hope that even with the depressed economy under stress in the year 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Nigerians in the diaspora will rise up to the occasion of not abandoning their country of origin, Nigeria, but to be active in our first COVID-19 economic recovery efforts. My three-point agenda for the Nigerians in diaspora remains the same and particularly relevant at this auspicious occasion, and I wish to repeat them as follows. A, you are our ambassadors at large by your behavior and character in your host countries. B, whatever legitimate endeavor you choose, you must excel and be the best. C, do not forget home, Nigeria, by giving back and engaging in its development. In my several interactions with Nigerians in diaspora at town hall meetings I have had in various countries of the world, I must say I have been impressed with the support and contribution of Nigerians in the diaspora to the socio-economic development of Nigeria.
May I therefore congratulate all Nigerians in diaspora and those at home on the auspicious occasion of the celebration of the 2020 National Diaspora Day. Thank you and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mike, I think it's time for us to bring in our first. There we go. What are you thinking? There, there we go. Now we're talking. We, we, yeah, we've got done all the formal engagement. This is time to have a little bit more fun and um, speed it up a little bit and get into some of that cruise that we know all about. So we're going to pass this over now to Timmy and we're going to introduce her brand new hit single, Great Nation. And yeah, we're, we're going to have a good time for the rest of the day. And um, now this is Diaspora Day, so guys, cheer up, smile, and um, let's have some fun. See me back a little. Oh, I'm speaking on this. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourself for no other than the 2019 NBA President Champion. Our diaspora delight this week is Masai Ujiri, the Nigerian who led Toronto Raptors to a historic NBA victory. Masai Ujiri, Raptors President of Basketball Operations, changed the face of the team when he brought the San Antonio Spurs' Kawhi Leonard an NBA champion and a three-time NBA All-Star to Toronto last summer. Ujiri was born in England on the 7th of July 1970 to a Nigerian father and a Kenyan mother. He was raised in Zaria, Kaduna State until he moved to the United States to attend high school with an ambition of playing college basketball. He also promotes basketball development across Africa as director of the NBA's Basketball Without Borders program. Proudly Nigerian. Oh, such an honor. Such an honor to be with you guys today. I, I, I want to say it's really special um, uh, for me to represent uh, the country, uh, to represent Nigeria. Um, Seeing everybody here uh, makes me happy. Seeing that rock uh, makes me happy and um, brings back so much unbelievable memories. I grew up uh, in Zaria in northern Nigeria and um, what, what an incredible, incredible uh, childhood I had um, growing up in that part of the country and um, learning all the values um, of life that really um, presents itself now for us to even tackle the world and tackle what we do um, as professionals, as human beings, as persons. Uh, so uh, it's such an honor to be with you guys today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about your journey. We know you grew up in Nigeria. You obviously went to uh, the U.S. for high school and then went on to play professional basketball as well. What was that journey, especially as someone who grew up in a country that favors football? How did you find your way in basketball and be so legendary at it? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I, I started playing football. You know that's the love of all of us. We come out of our mother's stomach and we start playing football right away. So 
um, I started playing football um, at a young age in, in Zaria and then found the game of basketball through my coach, Oliver Johnson, uh, in ABU, uh, Zaria, and playing on the outdoor courts here. Uh, and then the love of the game, you know, took me on this unbelievable journey uh, to the States where um, so I played basketball in prep school, went to college, uh, and then went to, to play professional. I wasn't a very good professional, but um, I managed to kind of um, hang, hang, hang in there. And uh, on that way, I was proud that in 97, I, I played for Nigeria, the national team, and developed um, this love for coaching and also watching younger players. I, I knew I wasn't going to be good enough to be a professional player at a high level. And my thinking started going towards um, sports, working in sports, scouting, and scouring the world for talent. And that's how I uh, started scouting. And honestly, by the grace of God, I'm Nigerian. You persevere. Um, you're resilient. You, you continue to try and work hard. Uh, you, try, you, you try to really, really um, do your best. And um, you... you, you there's struggles on the way, you know, all of us go through those struggles and I tried so hard uh, in, in, in every way uh, uh, to respect people along the way, be honest along the way, try to help people along the way um, and, you know, find this passion in the game because sometimes when we were growing up, there was a lot of concentration on go to school, go to school, go to school, which helped me. My parents were educationists, too. but um, I found a way in sports, and there was something new in sports where um, I had to I had to build myself in some in some kind of way. So um, I got promoted, and uh, by the grace of God, I was able to uh, get a job with Denver. Um, I started with Orlando. I was an update scout. I worked for a year without getting paid. And you just keep going, keep grinding, uh, keep plugging away. And then um, I, I, I found myself in this position, first as general manager and now I'm president of the team. And uh, there's been a lot of people that have helped along the way. And uh, I'm, I'm proud to be Nigerian. I'm proud to be African. Oh, lovely. We really enjoyed that one. And Mr. Mosiah, I have to ask this question as well. What does it mean now as you're very lucrative and your, your resume speaks for itself. What does it mean being in your position as a Nigerian for the representation for the Nigerians in the diaspora and Nigerians back home? Uh, it, it means so much because you carry a weight on your shoulder, but you carry it proudly. You know, I, 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 I love where I'm from. And it's the first thing that when, you, when you're in camp, when you're teaching youth, when we travel all over the continent is... Um, tell me your name. What's your name? My name is Masai Ujiri, and where are you from? Uh, I'm from Nigeria. I'm proud of that. Uh, that's, that's first and, and foremost. So I have to represent well because I know these positions don't come easy. They don't come often. Yeah, so uh, I have to do well. I have to win. I have to win on the court and I have to win off the court. And as you win off the court, you have to bring people along. It's so important that you bring people along because I don't want to be known as the only African that has managed a, a, a sports team in North America. That's not my goal. My goal is to bring other people along that are going to come after me um, because I'm not going to last forever. That's, that's just sports. That's life. That's, uh, that, that's, that's how it works, you know. So but while you're doing this, you just have to bring other people along. So um, hopefully um, this means a lot to me, and hopefully we can carry on and inspire the youth and the next generation. Oh, that's well, incredible. I'll let you know right now, we are absolutely so proud of you. We're so proud absolutely. to know that you are you are representing Africa in general as someone who is not, both Nigerian and Kenyan. We have Bami here with us as well, who I know she has a couple questions to, to ask as well before sending you into this moderation, but you can share more of your wisdom with the next uh, moderator as well. So Bami, welcome, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, sorry, we had a little technical problem. So Masai, um, you've, you've, had a little, you've had the opportunity to talk a little bit about 
what you've been doing with the MBA. Let's kind of take you back to the beginning because I know people are curious of how do you go from playing basketball in Zaria to becoming who you are right now? So we know you played um, professionally in Europe um, for several years. You returned back to Nigeria as a youth coach. What stands out in your mind about this pivotal period in your life that has set the stage for who you are today? Uh, honestly, Bemi, it's, 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 uh, it's upbringing, it's character, it's, it's the experience that you've lived, you know, and, uh, and I'm proud of that. I, I grew up like everybody else, you know, like I was, my parents, middle class, um, uh, living in Zaria. Um, I went to staff school, demonstration, secondary school, like uh, you had all that upbringing, you had all that teaching, you know, um, where your parents were strict with you with education, they were strict with you um, with discipline and um, that's what you live off of now, you know, but all the other experiences, I, I, I love them. I grew up with Muslims and Christians. I grew up uh, in the time of austerity. I grew up uh, in times when uh, things were hard and things were tough and I, do, I grew up in times when I followed politics in, in times when I followed um, the current president when he was president before that I grew up in times when I watched football and, and idolized Stephen Keshia and Herring Wosu and all those people. So um, all those build your character in some kind of way. And uh, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of um, that grind you go through and that builds who you are as a person. I'm proud of my parents, how they raised me. Um, there's, there's nothing like that. I'm so proud of my friends and people that I know. Well, you, you, you truly are a remarkable ambassador to Nigeria. When you won the championship last year, you made it a point to come to Nigeria in August with the NBA Larry O'Brien trophy. What did that mean to you to bring the trophy to Nigeria? Oh, uh, trust me, that was the first place I was coming, you know, like nobody, <laughs> nobody was stopping that one. You know, I, I needed, I, I, this is, is pride, right? Is, is where you're from, is, is the blood and sweat, is the people that have helped you, the people that encourage you, the people that pray for you. And you know, when we're playing through those championships, I cannot imagine, you cannot imagine how many texts I got from Africans, from Nigerians saying, by the grace of God, we're going to win. <laughs> yes. Inshallah, we're going to take the next one, you know? And that, yeah. those are the things that make you, you know? Those For are the sure, things man. that you live off of. And I was so happy, so uh, uh, to, to go back, to show my parents this trophy, to show Nigeria this trophy, um, to go back to Zaria and actually have this trophy on the basketball court where I started playing and to take it to my basketball coach um, was an unbelievable, unbelievable. I was supposed to actually bring the trophy to uh, President Buhari, but the timing did not work out because um, I, I can't remember why the timing didn't work out, but I was happy to see him at the African Union. Masai, you are so proud of being Nigerian. I mean, you've made, it a, you've made it a point, almost a mission of yours, to ensure that you're contributing to the positive narrative of Nigeria and Africa as a whole, particularly with the work you do with your foundation, Giants of Africa. ESPN recently featured a documentary of the foundation. Can you please tell us a little bit about Giants of Africa and what inspired you to start it? Uh, well... I, I wanted to, you want to give back, you know, because when you put in positions like this, you know, like you can live it and live it. Um, but I wanted to put myself in the position of where I was as a youth and what those kids like myself would be going through now and what they need. So I knew that they needed shoes, they needed jerseys, they needed basketball camps to be taught basic fundamentals. But you also need them uh, you, you also need to teach these kids the life skills. Uh, how, what, what it was important. So I said it before. Uh, what's your name? Where are you? Where are you from? Honesty, uh, being on time, respecting women. We have to respect women. It's something I want to say uh, very, very boldly here. It's something that is very important for us. And so. You teach these kids as they are young. And for me, Giants of Africa uses basketball as a tool, okay, to teach these kids what life is really about. Because not all of them are going to end up being NBA players. But most of them and all of them, are, all of them are going to end up being men 
and women. Uh, so it was a mission for me to spread this around the continent. So whether it's building courts or whether it's bringing coaches to teach the basic fundamentals of uh, basketball or whether it's setting up programs that are going to set a path uh, for this youth, it just became extremely important for me to come back every summer uh, during my downtime uh, to, to actually impact this youth the best way that we can. That's amazing. You speak about sports being a transformational tool, and you talk about that often. Last year, when you were at the African Union um, with the Canadian um, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, you engaged with several African leaders, including His Excellency President Buhari, and you kept talking to everyone about the importance of sports and the power of it. Considering all the recent development um, globally in, in, in sports, how do you see Africa and Nigeria fitting into this? Well, it's, it's so important, Bemi, and it's a great question. You know, um, I, I hope this is a, a, an incredible platform to really tell people that uh, there is an ecosystem around sports. I live it, I know it, um, where I see the business of sports. And when I look at the talent that we have on the continent of Africa, whether it's football, basketball, track and field, whatever it is, we have to create the business, yeah. So we have all these players playing overseas, playing in Liverpool, playing in Arsenal, playing in the NBA. And in my mind, why haven't we thought about creating our own leagues to that level? Because we have the talent. Now, do we have the facilities? Do we have the mindset? Do we have um, what it takes, you know, um, uh, the grind uh, to really figure this out? The education, the information uh, to figure this out. This is where I want Africa to use me, you know, and use some of us at Diaspora because we've experienced this. I know how much my company makes. I know how much revenue it brings. I know how, what's, how many jobs sports gives people. So I want to transform those national stadiums. We look at our national stadium in Nigeria. Why does it look like that? Why is it, why is it that way? Why can't we transform it into the way my arena and our stadiums look where there are shops, there are jobs, there are restaurants, and there it's pro producing places uh, to hold um, concerts, different things, and it becomes a machine. This is what we're talking about here, and it's really important that we have to start thinking that mindset. Okay. Okay, final question before we hand over to. Um, to to the panel. I know this question is on the minds of a lot of basketball fans in Africa, and I have to ask this question. We all got very excited last year when the NBA announced that it's going to have a league in Africa called BAL. Is that still happening, and where does that stand right now? Uh, yes, it is. And obviously, with COVID, it, it slowed us down. You know, this is, this is the real, uh, like uh, President Buhari said, it's the new normal um, everywhere. We have to adjust to that and and this is something we're trying to uh trying to adjust to i know my good friend amadou fall is 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 really thinking about this and how i think they are planning uh to actually hold this league in a bubble in september or october but it was full force the nba is behind this i know amadou is leading this in full force and this is what i'm talking about about the ecosystem and about how basketball is going to come to all of us at our door, is going to come to us on our screens, and we're gonna watch basketball being played professionally where people are actually doing it to entertain too. Yeah, so I know it's coming, it's just slowed us down a little bit with COVID, but I know Amadou Fall and the NBA are really working on this. That's incredible to hear. Thank you so much for your time. So now I'm going to hand over to the moderator of um, the next, um, panel. So now let's get down to it. Let's have a really good time having this conversation. What can we do and how can sports become that for us as Nigerians to be able to work together versus having our own little thing all over the place? Well, it starts by here. It always starts by, thank you. Thank you for, for saying all the, the kind words. I really appreciate you. Um, it, it starts by us just um, talking about it, the awareness, you know, so a lot of the education, um, the information you give, uh, as I talked about, a lot of us are not aware of how big 
sports is and how much sports unites people together. You know, you if you say there's a football game today and Nigeria is playing against somewhere, you know, you, you, you can imagine what it does, whether it's in Nigeria or at Diaspora. You, you, you see wherever we are. If there's a, the way we follow Arsenal and Liverpool and the Toronto Raptors and everything, it just unites us, right, in some kind of uh, incredible way. We now have to, we as Africans and Nigerians, and I say Africa as a whole because there's so much talent on the continent. Yeah, so we as a whole really, really have to understand this. And I'm appealing to you people as business people and whatever field you are, there's a, there's a part in sports that you can play. There are sports lawyers, there are sports educationists, there are sports psychologists, there's in every aspect of it, I have people that work with me that work in sports, okay? That, that, I have people that, that work in all fields, whether it's medical, whether it's analytics, whether it's law, whether it's governance, whether it's rules, whatever you think of. So there's a lot of employment that can be by it. So in Nigeria and in Africa, we have to pay attention to building facilities, right? And encouraging the youth, youth development, more games in secondary schools and in primary schools. And that's how it's going to emerge. But it starts from here, from you talking about it. Thank you so much. Very great. And that segues to Dr. Yetunde. I want to bring you on because there was something that uh, Mr. Yuri said when he was talking about his, uh, you know, like how he introduces himself. People are interested in your name and they ask you about yeah. your name. And when I talked to you yesterday, that was what, something that I felt like, you know, you brought up. So you were born here, you were raised here, but you have been very engaged in the diaspora community. How has, how has being a Nigerian, how has that helped you? and all the progress that you have made. And to the point that you just made, how can you as a professor begin to change the narrative about who we are as Nigerians and as Africans? Thank you. Well, thank you so much for that question. And I am so happy to join such a wonderful panel. And thank you to also Masai, because we, you know, when you won that trophy, although we're from New Jersey, we really were, you know, championing and happy with Toronto. So I, I remember that day uh, very vividly. So thank you for your leadership in, in ushering such a wonderful team. Um, with that being said, our name is our identity. And I feel like that's one of the first things that goes when we try to assimilate in a, in a country. But although welcomes all cultures, but at the same time, it's how do we find that balance between the American dream and the background of coming from Nigeria? And sometimes we try to accommodate to this American dream by really kind of giving a nickname or shortening our name or using our middle name because we feel as though it's easier for people to pronounce. I found myself doing that earlier, earlier on when I was in high school, trying to assimilate. Even though I was born here, I felt, well, it was easier for them to pronounce Victoria. But I realized that as I got older that my name was a form of my identification. It was showing you where I come from. It was a way of not only giving honor to my background, but also giving honor to my parents who came here many years ago in the pursuit to ensure that I also had opportunities, right? And these same opportunities that we are trying to create for those who are living and born in Nigeria. So, and as a professor, I teach imperialism. And one of the things about students is that, you know, my job is to bring the world to them. They may not have the opportunity to travel to another part of the world. They may never have the opportunity to maybe meet someone like me. But what I can do through my teaching is to let them know that Look, the world as we know it is uneven. Not everybody got a fresh start and not everybody got to, you know, to win the race when it started. But what happens is that there are historical contexts to the issues that we see in the world. And if you look at African countries, they may say some of it, why is some of these areas undeveloped? But the same issues that you may see on the African continent is the same issues you may see in Latin America. It's the same issue that you may see in Asia. So we, 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 there's an embodiment of understanding that we are where we are because of historical interferences, because of issues that, we, that were out of our control. And when they start learning the history of Africa, they get a better sense of, wow, this is a place that has a rich history. This is a place that has been through some things such as colonialism and all types of other issues. 
that some other countries have also been through. But at the same time, we have been able to reshape our story. And, and that being said, mm. by being an Af a, Niger a first generation Nigerian American woman walking to a classroom filled with a lot of people who don't look like me. So when the semester's over and I have a few of the, you know, the black students who come up to me and say, you know, this is my first time of having, you know, an African American woman mm. as a professor. Representation does something. Same thing as Maasai yeah. and everybody who's in these positions. When we are in a position, we represent our country. We represent our culture. Mm -hmm. And so when we excel and when we do good, we lift the whole nation with us. And that is our responsibility. And, 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 and I'm happy to carry that mm -hmm. responsibility proudly and forward. Hmm. That's awesome. Yes, I could tell that from just speaking with you, you know, before this <laughs> event. But yeah. I thank you so much for sharing that. And there's, I have another... Uh, uh, Fatima was actually born in New Jersey as well, and she's second generation Nigerian. And one of the things that she's done recently, which I believe a lot of uh, Nigerians want their next generation to do, is actually going back home. And, uh, and in her case, she went back to do the NYSC. So just speaking with her, I was so excited that, okay, there's, you know, there's hope for her going back home. So Fatima, I just wanted to call on you, if you don't mind, uh, to just share a little bit of your experience. What has been the most incredible learning going back? And how would you describe your transition from the United States back to Nigeria, not having been raised there? And for uh, people that want to do the same thing that you've just done, what, what, would, what are the tips that you have to share? Well, I've had the privilege to be coming back every other year before I even was able to do my NYSC service. So um, this has been my longest stay since visiting and the transition was quite um, an experience. I really enjoyed the youth court service that, um, yeah. that I've done. Um, I served at the Institute for Peace and Conflict Resolution, and I recently finished uh, this month. Um, yeah. So I know the system is completely different from America, but um, I still was able to transition with some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Musa, thank you so much. And I just wanted you to share a little bit uh, Having uh, been a Nigerian living in Saudi Arabia, of course, culturally, I'm sure there are a number of things that, you know, may be different, but I just wanted you to kind of share with us, how, how are you able to make the transition? Because I know you guys are now uh, very rooted back in Nigeria, you and your brothers, Imran and you, and, and I kind of know the uh, Ayaru. So you want to share with us how you made that transition, not only going back, but actually setting up businesses that are thriving in Nigeria, even though you actually leave res uh, you, you, your residence of Saudi Arabia. Yes, I'm very happy to be with you here. Uh, I'm very happy for this uh, time to, uh, the time that I'm going to spend with you. We are very glad to be with you also on this media. Uh, seriously, uh, um, we, we, I born and grew up in Saudi Arabia and Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So in 2003, I decided to finish my school, which is university in, uh, in Nigeria. So I came to Nigeria in 2003. It was very difficult time at that time because, as you know, the main language is, uh, I know it was Arabic. So I have a challenge is to learn English and continue in Nigeria. It was a very difficult time, but I pass it uh, with the help of the people around me. And I finished my, uh, my, uh, my BSc in Nigeria. And after that, I came back to Saudi Arabia and they started design how we can do something in Nigeria. There is many people in Saudi Arabia that have uh, interest in Nigeria to come to Nigeria and work in Nigeria, but they need uh, support from uh, uh, with organization like now NITCOM, something has uh, become as clear for us and uh, their goals has become clear and the target is clear. So uh, in 2015, we, we established Aliaro International uh, Limited 
and uh, this company is a group of Nigerians living in Saudi Arabia, the, the one that established it, and the company started working, and now we, we are managing a lot of uh, projects in Nigeria. One of the things that we're trying to talk about here on this panel is really how to thrive in your resident country as Nigerians. And you are an example of someone that you, you've been thriving, you know, you've been through all of that, not having been, I mean, you just, it was like, you know, you went from playing soccer to basketball and now you're one of the leaders. So one of the things I wanted to find out from you, uh, if you could share with us, what were your key learning experiences going, you know, just climbing through the ladder with all the politics? I mean, I can tell you when I first came to the United States, I didn't understand the politics at all because as Nigerians, you know, you say the way it is, but here you have to kind of like do the dance and all of that. So uh, how, what were the key things you learned coming up? And then on top of that, would you share with us some of the, if you had to do it again, what would you not do? What were the, you would say your, your worst mistakes, but that you turned around and it made you who you are today? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. You, uh, there, there are so many uh, mistakes you are going to make uh, along the way, but honestly, I would do it the same exact way because it comes down to, um, I, I think, uh, character and, mm -hmm. and, you know, treating people well along the way. You know, like I, I always come down to the basics because um, there's one thing I know about Nigerians who are smart as hell. I don't know if I can say that, you know, they're, they're Nigerians are just naturally smart people. I don't care what anybody says, you know, like Africans are smart, Nigerians are incredibly smart, you know? So I pride myself with that. I'm not saying, and I wasn't one of the smartest, you know, like, but I use my Nigerian, uh, uh, what Nigeria has given me, ra being raised there, um, meaning, you respect people as you go along, you know, and you know your boundaries, you know your limits, you know the edge where to push, and you know um, where to hold back um, mm -hmm. as, as, as you go. Um, right. And um, for me, uh, intelligence is just continue, you continue learning, you continue learning, and some of the things that you don't do so well, you try to do them, uh, do them even better. Uh, and, and when you know better, um, I say that you always uh, do better. Another thing is um, you show more passion than ambition. Some of us become too ambitious, right? We, can't, we, we say we want to get somewhere and sometimes you want to get there by all means, you know? Right. I never use that in, 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 in growing. Um, I use my passion, you know, the passion for uh, the game, the passion for people, hmm. the passion for different cultures, I'm never one to criticize another culture or criticize another place because we find ourselves in those places, right? And sometimes you have to adapt. I think that's something that's wrong, a lot of times wrong with the world. Some of us just grew up in different places. I grew up in Zaria and I had the best upbringing and I wouldn't change it for anything. I had the best upbringing ever. And I use those values um, to encourage um, and and. Uh, to teach even myself, you know, how and to educate myself on encounters that I'm going to have uh, mm -hmm. in life. And I'm very, I, I'm absolutely proud uh, mm -hmm. of that. I wouldn't change, I would, wouldn't change anything at all. Thank you so much. As we, we have a few more minutes, but I want to open it up to the panelists to ask your questions of Mr. Oyiri because, you know, it's just such a privilege for us to be in the same room virtually talking with him. So I would say, uh, Dr. Yetunde, what question would you have for uh, Mr. Yiri? Um, just being in, you know, in your leadership position, how do you, what do you feel your responsibility is to, in a sense, usher, usher Nigeria into the roadmap in every stage and every level of success that you have been through? Do you feel more of a responsibility? Do you feel that it's, it is, it is your, it's a, it's a purpose for you to bring Nigeria forward? Um, and what other plans do you have in, in possibly maybe setting up, you know, I know that you do a lot of humanitarian projects in Nigeria when it comes to basketball. Are you looking to expand it in, and in what ways? Uh, yeah, so it, it's an obligation almost, you know, you, you, it's something that I think of every day. I can't, I can't, uh, every day I go to sleep, you know, like <laughs> I think of my family, I think of my work, I think of Nigeria, and then I think of youth. 
Yeah, we have to think of the youth. I, I, we, we, that's, that's something that's so important to me is how we bring the youth up and, and what we're teaching them as, as, we, as we go. And um, uh, we have to pass all of this to mm. them. Yeah, we, we, we just have to, you know, and sometimes I think we concentrate so much on ourselves. I challenge everybody. I challenge leaders. I challenge people all over the world, Nigerians, uh, especially people listening now is how are we giving the youth opportunity? Yeah, because I saw how the kind of opportunity that I was given. As, as, as a young man, you know, where it worked and where it didn't work, what inspired and the path that you could take. And, mm -hmm. and I really feel that uh, it's a responsibility for uh, leaders in Nigeria. I love the work that BEMI is doing. All of you guys are doing incredible work, you know, like with encouraging young women. Yeah, we have to encourage young women. We have to. They're so smart. I went in my organization from hiring, from having one woman that works in a male dominant industry to having 15 now. Mm -hmm. And they can do so much, you know, like, and then I look at African women. We stand tall. Mm -hmm. We bring command. They're smart. You know, like they do. We have to continue. We have to give opportunities to youth, uh, to women, to all religions, to all people, that's who we are. That's what our country is. And you go all over the world, there is a Nigeria. I'm telling you, there's nowhere you look, you're going to find a Nigeria. I agree. I Thank agree. you so much. So, uh, Mr. Musa and Fatima, any other question, please? For our uh, keynote speaker, who has graciously okay. given us his time. Okay. Uh, um, I have one question is um what advice do you have for like us youths that are like planning to like come back home to Nigeria it's a it's such a it's such a great question um because I think a lot of people sometimes struggle with coming home and I think this is I, I say this with 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 as uh, being very very humble because I, do, I want people to take the president of Toronto Raptors out of it. I started coming home um, when I was an unpaid scout. So I was not even getting, when I was playing uh, for the national team and I got cut from the national team a couple of times. I actually got cut one time in the airport. The coach called me and told me you're not going, you know, like, so sometimes when we Africans are coming back from where we are, we sometimes think that we have to have a lot to come back because you, you almost want to, uh, you're almost proud that, okay, I'm coming from the US, I'm coming from wherever it is, you know, I have to have enough money. I have, yes, you have to have that. But I think Nigerians seeing you and you having an effect there and what you do, going back to Medugri or Borno or where you're from and people actually seeing you and you having that effect. People in diaspora, come home, come home, you know, come and experience what Nigeria is. People will say to me, I went to Meduguri um, two, three years ago. You know, people say, okay, oh, you're yeah, going to Meduguri. Why, why would I be scared of going to Meduguri when I grew up in Zaria? You know, like is somebody that's from New Jersey scared of going to New Jersey? You know, like that's how I see it. And I understand politics. I understand everything that's going on. I understand some of the issues we have. But when you are from there, this is who you are. This is where you grow up. We have to be proud of it. Yeah, we have to be proud. And I'm so happy that you are proud of where you're from. It shows. It shows from how you speak. It shows from you being at home now and you're stuck home. Yeah, things happen. We persevere. We're resilient. We get through it. And we help others and we keep going. And we're going to go through hard times. Trust me, there's nobody that's not. What do you miss most from Nigeria? Apart from Nigeria. I, I, want, I would have said the food, you know, I, I would have said the food. But, but I eat a lot. My wife, my wife is from Guinea and she cooks Nigerian food. I eat everything. I go see everything that you can think of. Suya. 
uh, everything. I love the food. I, I just miss the people all the time. I miss my parents, you know, but my parents come here often. Nigeria is incredible. I love it. I love being in Lagos. I love being in the north. I love being in Abuja. Um, it's, it's something that, that I am really, really proud of. But, you know, going to those typical places where you can get, uh, going to the University of Suya, going to all those places are, are, are things that I love, you know, so that's what I miss. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. We've run out of our time here. We believe in making our nation proud and you're just uh, such a lot. And uh, I think I'm grateful to all the panelists and especially, you know, the, the youths that have spoken so eloquently and from their heart passionately uh, this afternoon. And I thank you again for your time. One in every two Nigerians, they live in a household that receive remittances. And that is essential to take into account because, you know, we can see the impact that it can have because remittances in many ways are what we call dollars that are wrapped with care. And this is because the global experience tells us that, that when remittances come in, you know, a, those households that receive it, they have babies that have higher weights, they have uh, uh, people that have lower levels of, of, of poverty, uh, the kids tend to stay in a school, and, you know, many other uh, benefits that, that this come. It's very important to make sure that there are uh, channels for safe migration, for regular migration, and for orderly migration. For example, you know, there could be a skills-based partnership between Nigeria and other host countries to make sure that there's a, a, a constant flow of, uh, of people coming in and out, finding opportunities, learning the skills, and bringing that knowledge home. And there are many countries around the world that have been instituted uh, this type of policies, such as, for example, the Philippines, and we believe that Nigeria would, would really benefit from continuing this type of, of support for, for, the, for managed migration. My name is Ambassador Erica Bennett, and, oh. I'm, from, and I'm from Accra, Ghana. And do not get this accent confused because I am 99.99% proudly Nigerian. Hey. So I, so I want to start off by saying that and certainly all protocols observed. Um, I really must begin by saying thank you so much to the Honorable. Um, we, we affectionately called her Lady Diaspora. So those of you who refer to her as Mother Diaspora, we call her Lady Diaspora. And we're just so proud of who she is and what she does. And um, in Ghana, our, our emb embassy is here and we're working on our major presence there in Nigeria as well. Um, I am just overwhelmed at all of the wonderful speeches and all of the motivation that uh, I heard. I have been on this line all day long. And then again, when you get to be 70, to be on this um, Zoom thing for, set, for all these hours, it really is something. So it really must be motivational. And it was to me. So again, I want to say thank you. For being here today, I, I, it, I think it's a privilege indeed uh, to be part of this conversation. Uh, and to, to, to lend a voice uh, to the importance of the diaspora. Um, uh, you've seen the conversation and you've heard what Marco and Edwards have said, uh, but I think uh, we, we need to reinforce uh, the importance of di the diaspora. So I'm uh, actually commending uh, the chairman uh, for uh, keeping the spirit and actually bringing uh, this day forward despite COVID-19. Uh, we celebrate the diaspora not because they provide a substantial contribution to the uh, Nigerian economy. Marco mentioned that about $25 billion. Uh, on average, uh, uh, it's the last six years, about $96 billion, making it the top uh, sending country in, uh, in Africa. But Marco also mentioned that we expected 25% uh, cut in, in uh, remittances. That's 25% uh, less money uh, uh, for school fees, 25% less money for food as we see food prices go uh, 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 up. We celebrate the diaspora, not because of the remittances they, they, they send, but because of the social and social capital that they bring uh, to the country. Uh, uh, you saw my Sai, uh, the, 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 the aura around him. That, that's why we celebrate the diaspora. 
COVID-19 brought uh, the uh, uh, challenge uh, for us, of course. And I think this is when Nigeria needs the diaspora most. Uh, as you can see from the previous panel, uh, Nigeria has uh, extreme silence uh, outside of the country. So this is when the country needs them back uh, to, 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 to restart the engine of the economic development to, to, to facilitate uh, uh, um, uh, those who um, uh, may need them the most. This is uh, why IOM, uh, uh, from its work, its platform, is working with the Nigerian uh, uh, government to effectively connect with the uh, uh, Nigerian diaspora. And we do this uh, and to a facilitated process that we adapt a country comprehensive strategic approach that is centered on the three E's uh, for action, as we call them. It's enable, uh, engage, and empower the diaspora as to be effective agent and development. Uh, uh, so an IOM can be in the background providing the technical support to policy advice and programming uh, to government and stakeholders. I just want to, uh, you know, express uh, that, you know, 2020 is a very eventful year. Uh, diaspora Day, obviously, is a unique event. Uh, and uh, the question that we need to ask ourselves now is how does Nigeria leverage on the resourcefulness and expertise of its diaspora population beyond the remittance inflows. Of course, we are aware of the many efforts and initiatives made by the government of Nigeria and the engagement uh, and creative opportunity uh, that the government has been has introduced. Um, however, beyond this, I think now is the time to really consider the participation of the diaspora population in the political and elect electoral process of Nigeria. The COVID-19 pandemic has also demonstrated that Nigerians can't use uh, technology when it comes to you know, taking uh, advantage and using the opportunity to advance our own development. Um, so the starting point at this uh, stage uh, and what we can do is to deploy electronic voting process, which in turn must make, take into account the possibility for diaspora voting. Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to this uh, panel. Um, as I was introduced, my name is John Abraham uh, Godson. And um, in this panel discussion, we will be talking about leveraging diaspora for national um, development. And my panelists are um, architect Musa Dangiwa, Mr. Victor Edozier, and Dr. Jonathan Obaje. Could you please briefly tell us your story of how you come, you know, how you became a diaspora. Hi, uh, first of all, it's definitely an honor to be a part of this panelist and part of this program. And I'm thankful for this opportunity. Um, I, 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 was born in, I, was, I was born in the United States. And uh, when I was uh, young, my parents were here for college and then moved back to Nigeria. And I came back to the United States for college and I've lived here ever since. So. I am one of these Nigerian Americans that, you know, was born here, have my roots in Nigeria, and then for my university education, I moved back to the States and I've lived here ever since. So. Question to architect uh, Musa uh, Dangiwa, the MD of uh, Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. Could you please briefly tell us a little about the Federal Mortgage Bank? of um, Nigeria. I understand that many of us in the diaspora, um, we are interested on in what you have to offer um, to attract us back home. As you quite well know that the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria has been established to provide affordable mortgages to drive home ownership among Nigerians, particularly the low, low in, medium income earners in Nigeria and the country. It is being done through the National Housing Fund. It's a scheme established by an act of the National Assembly to draw a pool of funds from Nigerians, whether living in Nigeria or abroad, whereby the even Nigerian contribute 2.5% of their income into the National Housing Fund. It is from this pool of funds that the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria leveraged on and they gave affordable mortgages at simple interest rates and a long, over a long term to Nigerians in order to own homes, to the, own their own houses. Some of the products of the bank has ranged from the 
mortgage loan to buy your own house or to construct your own house or to renovate your own house. We also have construction, individual construction loan where you have a title land wherever in the country, whether uh, in the hinterland or in the capital, state capitals or in the federal capital. Once you have a title land with the CFO, with your designs and the bill of quantity, the Federal Mortgage Loan of Nigeria will give you the loan to build your own house. These are some of the products the bank gives to individuals. I'm for the <laughs> And now to Dr. Obaje. Um, I understand that since you've been living in Singapore, that um, you regularly visit Nigeria. Um, and I want to ask you, what are some of the positive changes you see over the years uh, as you visit Nigeria? Do you I even see any Airport changes? Has transformed recently. <laughs> I like the, um, okay. the new um, Nigerian airports. Um, okay. Of course, the, I mean, um, a, a few things uh, uh, are going on. Um, and I think that with the um, introduction of the social media and the um, communication transformation, um, information has been, you know, of course, good and bad information. Uh, and the learning has become uh, much easier for students, I mean, who want to learn who want to pick up skills. And I've seen a lot of young people easily uh, self-taught and uh, been able to pick up a number of skills around. Um, so these are some of the um, uh, things that are happening. The world has been become a global uh, village. There gotta be the alignment from the stakeholders in Nigeria saying, okay, we have, we need, we have a need for stakeholder development. Those of us in the diaspora bring two things important, three things capital, foreign capital, and expertise that may not be homegrown, that can be transformed, that can be brought back home. But more importantly, we bring an invaluable network of just mm. our grand equity that is in, is in these countries that we live in. And um, a system, I mean, we need to train our youth, okay, uh, to be in the new age, to be able to know how to do things using computers and all that. Number two, that means that curriculum in, the, in our schools need to change in the university. And I'm longing to come back to the Nigerian university. I'm just told by somebody now who said that um, Nigerian University Commission has already changed the policy and they are doing something better now. I would like to come back to Nigeria and transform the curriculum so that our educational system should be very relevant to the industries, okay? Mm. Now it is not. Mm. The second, the third mm. thing is very important is what we call cultural revolution. Cultural revolution because right now we need to restore our moral values in the youth. If you are given opportunity to serve in reforming and building Nigeria, what would you start with? What exactly would you do? Maybe this time, let's start with Dr. Obadje and then next to Mr. Dozier. Simple. So you can continue Simple, um, Dr. what John. you're saying. Yeah. Simple. You know what I will do? The next three years, the next three years, I will start from people that are importing electronics or any material, cars to Nigeria. And I say, look, in the next three years, the number of cars that will be imported to Nigeria will depend on how many, how many mechanics have been trained to repair Mercedes or Toyota, I tell you, Toyota will run down to Nigeria to start setting up schools where they can train our technicians. I will tell you how many um, AC, how many um, uh, whatever you, we are going to import. That's number one. Number two is the youth get into any skill training center. We will pay you oh. allowance every month, but you must learn something. You don't just go and say you are an electrician. You don't know how to handle um, anything in electrical. You don't go and repair somebody's tile or lay tiles in a house without going to the school. You don't go and become a, a you know, to uh, open a restaurant without going to a mm. school. And without certification, okay. you cannot do nothing. Mm. <laughs> we are going to continue that discussion, but I want Thank to go back to uh, architect uh, Musa Dangiwa because um, our diasporans are really, 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 really interested in um, how they can access some of the things that, some of the offers 
you have uh, mentioned. If there are transparents who want to make use of the mortgage or credit facility of the Federal Mortgage Bank, what should they do? That is to architect Dangiwa. Well, thank you very much. Uh, there's no doubt Nigerians and diaspora contribute significantly in their home communities and the Nigerian economy. As said by Mr. Victor, he said that they contribute in capital, in expertise, and even in invaluable network. We realize that uh, with the estimated over 20 million Nigerians and diaspora, that's it's a large sum of money that contribute over 25 billion naira. Uh, billion dollars, which is almost 8.8 trillion naira at the extent of 355 naira. So there's no doubt this quantum of funds will make positive impact uh, if invested in the real sector of the economy. That's why the bank, in its own wisdom, we realize that the, 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 the need for the bank to develop a product that will benefit the Nigerians in diaspora. The, we developed this uh, because we find that who's developing the diaspora, we call it a diaspora energy mortgage loan. Okay. And we are sure that this will deepen the mortgage finance in Nigeria. That's why the bank developed this product targeted at Nigerians living outside the country uh, to give okay. them opportunity to participate in the scheme. At the same time, the loan windows will offer the mortgage loan to build houses for them within the country of their choice. Okay. Okay. Established, okay. we realize that with the bulk of funds remitted by our brothers in Nigeria, it's very significantly large. Even if a portion of it is being used to, to, in the real housing estate, I think it's going to make an impact. We realize that though part of this remitter is valid for men, for the family, upkeep, and other needs, a large chunk of this money is usually meant for residential development back home. But you realize that uh, you okay. usually engage your brothers or sisters to build these houses for at the end of the day they don't buy the money. So we rely that if channels through the establishment of mortgage system, these funds can deepen and help launch of the industry. While mortgage while diaspora mortgage diaspora Nigeria will also be able to access mortgages in order to own their houses back home in a structured, safe design environmentally qualitative environment. Mm. Wonderful. I want to thank all our panelists uh, Architect Musa Dangiwa, Mr. Victor Edozian, and Dr. Jonathan Obaje. Um, I believe that this is very important uh, issues we are discussing, and I hope that we will have opportunity to continue this somewhere. The diasporans must get involved in the process of nation building, in the process of um, changing the narrative of what is happening in our country. I want to thank you all, and I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you very much. So, with that being said, we're on to some goodwill messages that are going to be coming by two representatives of Oakswash. So, I'd like to bring next Dr. Nicholas Igwe and Stephanie Linus Okereke from Oakwash. Please tell us a little bit about your organization and what message you have. Please be mindful, we're also cutting a bit short on time, so if you can please make it about two minutes, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And uh, let me start by thanking and appreciating Honorable BK, you know, Gabriella, the CEO, Chairman, Nidcom, and the Opswash Diaspora International Office and Ambassador. Achievement, as we all know, in the creation of the Diaspora in the Commission are novel and unmatched. I must also commend the energy, support, and strategies of the diaspora that despite the global social and economic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, we still remain patriotic by coming together through alternative means to discuss important issues around encouraging the diaspora resources in the economic development of our dear country, Nigeria. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, doctor, um, for having me. But I want to say, I feel like I sneaked in on this whole um, this webinar that is going on. But I want to say a big thank you to Honor uh, BK Dari. It's been a long time. I haven't seen you for a while, but I just want to say thank you for having me on this panel. You know, our relationship goes a very long time. I specifically want to thank you for giving me access to the National Assembly when I did my movie drive, you know, to shoot, to, to have access to shoot the film. So me partnering with Upshore, I think is very important but like you know the constant um 
what I ask myself is, I have a platform as a celebrity. A lot of people listen to you. So what do you use that platform for? And that's why when COVID happened, it just, you know, I just said, well, I think it's high time we talk about hygiene and, you know, let it be something that will become a national culture to us and something that we take seriously. And I am with so many things that have happened. I just realized a lot of people really are not aware. There's not a conscious effort of them wanting to be hygienic. And because of that, they don't care about the other person. So I feel, um, you know, given and lending my voice to Upshot and some of the things that he want to do and some of the ideas that we brought out to make it exciting, to make it engaging for young people, returning to a show just to get them for it to become like a cultural thing that we do in Nigeria. When Ebola happened, everybody went into the frenzy of washing their hands. And after that went off, everybody went back to ground zero and, you know, continue what they were doing. But I just said this time with COVID is very important, important for us to create a lot of awareness and education and get people to take responsibility about their own hygiene. So it's not like it's something that this one doing. So that's coming to this platform. We, are, we all need to be involved. So on behalf of this uh, large family, we want to observe one second silence for the demise of our diasporans that lost their life during this COVID-19. The God healed the world and also healed the country. I mean, uh, the Association of Biology Change of Nigeria is a self-regulatory organization in terms of compliance of their members and also in collaboration with regulatory uh, monetary authorities for ensuring liquidity in the retail end of the market and achieving exchange rate for, uh, uh, stability. There's a need for organizations for those of us in the diaspora to bring new, new blood in the engineering that uh, have the passion and the expertise to impact the this situation in Nigeria. But finally, most important is that the morale of Nigerians has been depressed because of all the corruption going on. There should be a technology to address corruption, this critical you know, uh, constraining problem in Nigeria. My talk is about COVID-19. Uh, that has been what has occupied the whole world since December last year up till now and it's still ongoing. So we will be talking about the do's. What should we do as a people? Uh, in Nigeria, we believe that COVID-19, some people believe that COVID-19 doesn't exist. Some people believe that COVID-19 only affects the rich people. That is not correct. And that is where we as individuals, as each citizens have a role to play in terms of what precautionary measures that we should undertake. I'm sure most of us have heard about this, but repeating them again goes a long way to reestablish, to react, to reecho uh, what we have to do to keep this virus at bay. And it is for this reason that we are told to wash our hands regularly with soap and water. Even soap and water is enough to destroy the virus. If you have hand sanitizers, when that is also good. We've also heard about the sneezing and coughing etiquettes. If you have a tissue, use it and bin it. But in the absence of that, what you're advised to do is to sneeze into your elbow. And in doing so, you do not transmit uh, the virus. So no shaking of hands, no hugging uh, is allowed. Social distancing, two meters apart, will break that transmission. One of the things we shouldn't do about this COVID-19 is to stigmatize people. It isn't a disease that we should be ashamed of. And stigmatization is causing a lot of problems in Nigeria. So we should not stigmatize uh, people. As Nigerians in diaspora, listen, my friends, we have a critical role to play. It's the same thing everybody's been talking about, whether educated or not, this is clear. We have a critical role to play, and it is that of leadership. Generations of miseducation about leadership have convinced many of us that only those in position of authority are called to lead. We believe 
that if we are not elected, selected, assigned, or appointed, our role is simply to watch and to criticize. But let me start by saying it's a great pleasure to address NIDCOM at the 2020 National Diaspora Day of Celebration. As a UK parliamentarian of Nigerian descent, the support from Nigerians both home and abroad is heartfelt and inspires me. And I endeavor to serve the good people of Edmonton who have re-elected me three times. My time in parliament is well spent both as a backbencher and as the chair of the all party group for Nigeria. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I want you all to remember to stay safe, remain vigilant, and to look after yourselves in this unprecedented times when we're quite worried and concerned for our health. I moved back to Nigeria in 2008, and I would say that I think that the, the motivation to move home at the time is still probably the motivation that I have to remain here and to continue to, to try and make it work. And that's because I feel a sense of purpose and a sense of calling to what is happening in Nigeria and to being part of or one of the people that contributes to the rebuilding of the country and to making the country work in whatever way that we can. And I think that, you know, a lot of small business owners, especially Nigerian small business owners that are, that are resident here or involved in businesses here, if they're based abroad, um, for a lot of us, that mindset is the same, right? So um, I am a musician, but in, in starting out as a musician and a record label executive, we were already positioning ourselves years ago to, to pivot into what we're doing now, which is more of a media agency, which is more of a, a marketing company. And the skills that I picked up while going to school and just studying and researching and, and understanding life outside of the country are the things that I'm putting into place here. I'll give you a perfect example. My very first job in life was making minimum wage at McDonald's, which for the people that are in Nigeria, that's like working in Mr. Biggs. But this is a diaspora call, so I'm sure everybody you know, is from that side of things. But that was my first job in life, was minimum wage at McDonald's. But in working at McDonald's, I was able to kind of learn that business and understand what it took to do an assembly line in the kitchen and how it runs and you know, yeah. just all the things with the restaurant delivery service. And those are the same skills and tools that I'm using now with my, myself and my illustrious partner, Alamidu, and, and the way that we're running the Suya Bistro business now. So, yeah. so I think that's what it's about, is about whatever experiences that you have, even when you're just starting out or working an odd job, just keep learning and then figure out how you can use that um, to build and how you can use that to grow and evolve and use those tools, you know, to do the things that you're doing now. It's yeah. not enough to sit in New York or London or whatever and just tweet and retweet and post yeah. memes and all of that. It's about saying, okay, where I am, what can I do? Can yeah. you contribute to a charitable effort? Can you contribute to a, a, an election campaign of a candidate that you believe in? Can you con contribute to raising awareness about some of the issues back home? And so wow. um, to everybody in the diaspora, be a part of the solution from the bottom up. Find a charity find a candidate, find an effort, find something that you can contribute to. And yes, continue to tweet. Yes, continue to post. Yes, continue to raise awareness. Um, we have every issue under the sun we're struggling with, from yeah. poverty and hunger to unemployment to sexual assault. Um, and, and I think at, at this point, it's a good time to give a shout out to Auntie Abike. Honorable, thank you, my God bless you. God keep you. God protect you. Continue to push. Continue Amen. to do things that you do, um, and thank you for having me here today. But yes, so the message to the diaspora is you are needed, you are important, you're a part of this fight with us. And if God has blessed you to locate you to be earning dollars at the time that our Naira is doing what he's doing, please, 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 please find a way to make some of your resources, no matter how little, um, be a part of something that's greater than yourself and your family's um, comfort and success. And if we all play wow. our part, then I still believe that we can turn this thing around. We can change the narrative. We can rebuild this country into the kind of country that we want it to be. But we all have a part to play in that. So please, don't just talk. Do something. Do something about it. Do something. Uh, the, the distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, and this uh, exceptional cake. Yeah, before we start, please. You see, we do the hygiene.
We're and making sure we are, we're all staying safe. On behalf of uh, Nigeria Indigenous Organization Europe, my Thank you very much. It's been a very long day. Let me add my voice in congratulating all Nigerians in the diaspora on this auspicious uh, occasion of the 15th National Diaspora Day celebration. We thank His Excellency President Muhammadu Buhari GCFR for his recognition and appreciation of all Nigerians in the diaspora and their contributions to national development. I want to thank all those that have made this day the success that it has been. Our sponsors, members of the National Assembly Committees on the Diaspora, His Excellency the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Zubairu Dada, all our resource persons and contributors, especially the Managing Director of the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. He has announced a great program for the diaspora in terms of the, na the new National Diaspora Housing Program. We want to also thank uh, the staff of NIDCOM and especially the local organizing committee that has worked hard over the COVID-19 period to put up this particular program. We also like to appreciate all diaspora organizations that have participated to celebrate this great day. God bless all Nigerians in the diaspora. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Diaspora people, pop up the volume, pop up the volume, man. My diaspora people, man, what's up? Back it up with you, I see you. Dr. Shew, I see you. One love to all people in the diaspora. We'll take it gently. Eh? The only one I ever see is stars so bright. Hey, and just yesterday, came around my way. Came a horse in me with your astonishing beauty. Dr. Shaw, I see you. Yes, so honorable Africa, that really one love, man. Africa Queen, official. If your mouth is not too busy, follow me, see. You are my Africa Queen. Dr. Shell, you can have a fight. Take away and never be. Honorable Africa, that really, I see you. Oh, you are my Africa Queen. I said, you are the girl of my youth. And you remind me of what you Hey, I just this. Africa. Africa. Let's go, let's go. I don't want to come across to you like trust another. Hey. I know you cannot trust nobody, but you have to trust someone. Oh, that's why I want to see me as your brother. Sing along, sing along, say, hey, uh, hey, brother. Sing along, sing along, sing along, say, hey. Hey brother, sing along, sing along, sing along, say hey. Hey brother, sing along, sing along, sing along, say hey. Ah, hey brother, hey, 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 bless you, hey, bless you. Bless all of you, my people in the diaspora, bless all of you, bless all of you. One love, one love to everybody in the diaspora, you guys are too much.